Brian? Brian? Where are you? Vince, my darling boy, I've been waiting for you all day. Please, come sit. What is this? Is this one of those avant-garde tray of novelty lighters? Huh? Oh no, it's the thing where I've got to guess which one of these is made of chocolate, right? No, of course not. I mean, yeah, one of them is made of chocolate, but that's besides the point. It's a simple game of chess. I thought we might play. Look, I'll start. Your go. Oh sure, yeah, I'll tap two black mana and I'll cast him to Turok. Uh, do you have any responses? Vince, what are you doing? Have you never played chess before? <laughs> Says the man who spent his first turn trying to attack me with what? What is this, a planes? Rookie move, Brian. That's a rookie move. Oh no, it's happened. Mana blur. Mana blur? Mana blur. M mana blur? When you humans play magic for too much of your mortal lives, it begins to take you over. First, you start saying every trading card game is like magic. Then you stop playing other games altogether. Before too long, books, movies, even oil paintings will be replaced with thoughts of Magic the Gathering in your head. Oil paintings? They're like those Texas reward promos, only significantly larger, but around the same price point. Ugh, oh, you're so far gone already. Listen to me. This is called chess. You use your pieces to take your opponent's pieces. You can block when your opponent attacks you with their creatures. If you lose your king, you lose the game. I like the monarchy mechanic too, Brian, but I think you're exaggerating a little. And each piece can only move in specific directions. They have banding. Oh no, even with your magic addled brain, you still don't understand how banding works. How does banding work? You don't understand. This is ridiculous. Just because I can see allegories between two different game systems doesn't mean I can't play. Watch this, watch this. I'll tap one green mana and I'll play Noble Hierarch and pass the turn. The Sicilian defense. How did you? Your move, old man. Fine. I'll cast Scavenging Ooze and pass the turn. And with all this extra mana, I guess I can play this knight as well. Nani? <gasps> Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Hmm. Abrupt decay, your rook. No! Ha <laughs> ha! I attack you. Take the monarchy. Any responses, Brian? None. I am bested. That is indeed checkmate. I cannot believe someone as mana blurred as you beat me at chess. I don't have mana blur, Brian. How can you tell? Because I play two highly addictive collectible hobby games at once. They cancel each other out. Anyway, I think I'm wounding that king on twos. Vince, you had a commander game that you played in last night. Can you tell us how that went? Yes, uh, German Gary Oak, also known as George on the internet. Wait, it's the other way around. Either way, um, I, I spared Krim, the Asian Avenger, from death because I had an unblockable creature. And I realized I did, so I didn't attack him with it because it would have killed him, so I attacked someone else. Why didn't you attack him with it? I didn't want him to die because I wanted the game to go on for a bit longer. We only really just started. Okay. I didn't want him to sit out for half an hour <laughs> like in a place that we didn't know. Um, and I pass the turn order and German Gary Oak, come back to the original point, kills me with Triumph of the Horde. <laughs> Why did he do that? Because uh, I was a threat. Because I had yeah. the best board state. I was miles ahead. And then what did you do after you died? I just wandered around the shop for half an hour. <laughs> it wasn't the most fun experience. I don't begrudge him for that. Um, but do you think was... he shouldn't have done that? <sighs> Maybe because the vibe was so casual and so mess about. Like it wasn't a serious game in any way. But I don't begrudge him for taking out the biggest threat. Um, I've had that all my life. People are all taking pop shots at me. Yeah. because um, But that's regardless of magic, obviously. Yes, yes. Well, we, we're, we'll get to your personal life in the next sure, episode. Sure. But then shouldn't you have taken out Krim? You chose not to destroy yes. Krim when you could have. Yes. Shouldn't you have killed Krim? Or shouldn't German Gary Oak, otherwise known as George, not have killed you? It seems like two very diametrically opposed things yes. happened in this commander game. In and everybody needed cycle. to be... Yeah. on the same page. I don't know if they needed to. Um, 
It is really weird because I am on in the camp, as we're going to come to shortly, of, you know, do what you want. It's just Commander. Who really cares? Why are we taking this so seriously? Um, let's stop telling people not to do things. But then I was like, well, I guess I am not doing anything for 30 minutes now. Well, they back, because you know what Commander's like? Right. Oh, that could have been a lot longer. That could have been sure. another hour because I was the first to die. So I do feel like a hypocrite saying it, but I was just, I think it was when I stood there for the 20th minute staring into the Games Workshop Warhammer section in Mox Boarding House. And I was you like, play Warhammer I from do. Games Workshop? There's no retreat Oh as well. my gosh. Why have you never done any videos on Warhammer? I have. Every Wednesday, everyone, YouTube.com forward slash present Kenobi. And yes, I have a YouTube channel. Anyway. You stream on Twitch? I do. He they streams on Twitch. They won't promote me in any way or have an algorithm where people can discover me, but they will send me socks. That's perfect because we are here at <laughs> Today, we are asking the question, is Commander a format where you need to go easy on your opponents? Do you go easy on your opponents? No. No. I don't, ever. I will never. So, uh, I don't go easy on my opponents in gameplay ever, ever. I go easy on my opponents in two areas. One, the way I build my deck. Yes. Now, is that going easy on my opponents? I will intentionally not put, I have I have a play set of mana crypts and mana vaults, and ooh, I do not run- the YouTube ooh. money. Yeah, right, that's, where that, that's, that's why I'm on YouTube and not Twitch. <laughs> that's a very good point. But <laughs> I don't put a mana crypt and a mana vault in every single deck. I only have them in certain decks. I agree, a massive with that ethos. So sure. that's one way I go easy on opponents, but I, uh, I also go easy on opponents in, I'm a really, really bad player. And that is me going easy on them because I, if you've ever seen my gameplay, am not an optimal player. Oh, okay, so you're 15 minutes into a can of manic. Let's do the hypothetical, a similar situation. Yeah. 15 minutes in, and you and you and Krim, I said it's Krim again, have been trash talking each other. That's why there's this going no, on. No, I'd take them out immediately. And you've hit them twice already down to 11 life. Yeah, I'd take them out. You've forgot your creatures got unblockable. As someone else said, I was like, ha ha, he's so dead. And you're like, oh. You, I you think you him. made the game worse by not taking him out. I want to tell you, I'm not saying this is a joke. I'll tell you why. If you had taken him out, George would have still taken you out. And then it's then George and whoever you're, I'm an old man and I go to bed at 10 p.m. every night and that isn't a joke. So I was at home I asleep. Actually, what actually happened was I was like, I'm to play some Commander and Brian was like, I don't like magic. I didn't say that. I said I don't like Commander. <laughs> you said, no, no your exact words were Commander is miserable. I, mean, like, I did say that. Out. No, no, well, I said, I said Commander is miserable with strangers and there would have been a stranger. Well, I wouldn't call Krim a stranger. No, anyway, I, meant, I, I forgot George right, was going to be there. If I, had, if I had known George was to be there, I would have definitely not played. If I eliminated Krim, <laughs> I would have had a partner to wander around the shop for half an hour for. Right. If you'd eliminated Krim, George and the fourth that you were playing with would have been in a 1v1 little setup where very likely one of them would have won quickly, and then you all could have gotten onto the next game even more quickly. And I think that by going easy on Krim in that game, you prolonged the game, made it miserable for yourself, potentially made it miserable for other people like in the game and yeah. I will never go easy in my my plays I will never say oh I've got the kill but I won't do it the, unless doing it would be bad for me in terms of I need to keep you alive so that I'm not the next target and I, and I agree with you like I don't like to pull my punches I, I'm in the exact same way I hate it when we agree so categorically but I pull my punches in deck construction not in what I'm doing it's dumb to have the win in hand and just sit around for four turns to make everyone else feel better I think that's stupid however many I commander do think, players think you, you shouldn't do that I do, it's too yeah. early Exactly. Game or? But I do, and this is where I can see the point a little bit, is I do think that if the stars align and you have a one-shot kill on one person, would that be Triumph of the Hordes or the other one black, a technical strike or whatever, mm -hmm. like an infect kill. I mean, you've already chose to play those cards, so maybe that's your plan. And you only kill someone on like turn three or four, and you know the game will go longer, because it will. Commander game's gone forever. That bit sits weird with me because I sat down to play. Imagine Monopoly, but you can eliminate one player. Hang on, can you? You can. How does a no Monopoly even work? That's uh, a bad horribly. example. Horribly. And yes, you can just eliminate one Imagine player. Imagine Dungeons and Dragons where one player gets eliminated. They do, and then you have to do a whole sub quest to get them brought back to life. Yeah, exactly. But it's I also boring. don't think, the reason I'm saying this is a segue, I don't think magic is D&D. I think magic is more monopoly. It's a, it's a, it's a right. competition, not a collaborative storytelling experience. Many people feel Commander is a collaborative storytelling experience. And maybe that's okay. If everybody sitting down to the table feels that way, the problem is, is you're at Mox, and your fourth was an old man who went to bed at 10 p.m., so you needed a fourth. So it was you, George, and Krim. You needed a fourth, and a fourth was available because you're in a popular game store in Portland, Oregon, Mox Boarding House, where you might find me some days. Never him because he's in... Uh, 
uh, uh, the country right, of astral, England. I astral project across yeah, like I am England. now. England, you sometimes. need a box, Mox Boarding House, England. Yeah, Wouldn't Mox Boarding wild? House, Hampshire would be lovely. But yeah, I'll go to Mox. Mox is wicked. Right. So that fourth sits down and is not necessarily going to be in the same agreement as the three of you. You attempt to have a rule zero pregame talk conversation. And I think that all pregame talk should be preempted with, let's all now have these rule zero pregame talk. And then you roll out the scroll, right. and you check off the list, and you do the dance. And, and then, then, and then someone's upset anyway, and it doesn't work. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have my video on the Rule Zero talk, which I, I, I thought at the time was good to try and popularize it. So how long ago did you make the Rule Zero, your Rule Zero video? I, I, I believe a year ago, like, right. like maybe even no more than a year ago. I wouldn't be surprised if it was less, it was 10 months ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And at the time, this was the big buzz, a lot of people in the community. It's not like I thought up the concept or uh, uh, the other creators who were pushing it as well thought it up. It was a big buzz going in the community that this is, is gonna fix Commander. And I have always been going back years, a proponent of talk to your friends, talk to the other yeah. players. So it it at the time felt like, lightning in a bottle, this is a great idea. And with me and my friends, it worked fairly well, but I don't think it works fairly well with strangers. I, I think the term rule zero is the weird bit. Like, cause you're saying like talk well, to your friends. Uh, uh, technically it's pre, we, the pre -game we talk pre game talk is not rule zero. These are two different things. Yeah, Rule they, zero is, is I can have an Iona in my deck yeah, and I mean, pre game talk yeah. is what kind of game do you want to get? But yeah, it but gets mashed that, it all gets colloquially it all gets together. We but mean talk before it's, you start It's crazy playing. that we've had to like get to this point where we have to tell people, talk to each other. I guess it's good to have the etiquette in the community that you have a pre-game talk when you go to a command fest and sit down with three other people. But oh, I also goodness. don't think everyone's on the same page. Like no. one of the most jarring incidents was the first command fest I went to, or first commands only had. So we're talking just before the pandemic. So what, three years ago now? Right. But um, oh my God. we had a pre-game talk about, you know, how powerful our decks are and everyone's saying a six. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put this away and get out something I think is weaker. And then one of our opponents like turn two makes old Vorin Clex, you know, yes. tap down all your stuff. And I'm like, oh, so now if I answer that, which I can't, but if I did, I'm tapped down. And the game just spiraled out of control to this player's thing. And I was like, is that, is that really a six? And the other guy's like, I think it's a six. I'm just like, this is nonsense. So going back <laughs> before the pregame was this power ranking, yeah. which I always said was baloney, yeah. bull plop absolute bull plop to say my deck is a seven, my deck is a five, my deck is an eight. And you know who taught me that that was bull plop? I was at a command fest and it was a young man by the name of Krim, AKA the Asian Avenger, who was supposed to bring a level seven deck to a charity stream that I was doing with Sheldon Menery and Olivia Gobert Hicks and Krim. And he brought this Mogus God of the Slaughter deck that was just, over the, it was like over the top. There was no way that, there was no universe in our vast multiverse that that deck is a seven. But maybe that's a and, seven. And he in... genuinely, he was laughing, but he was like, it's a seven, it's a seven. But like, maybe it it's a seven, seven between him and his friends, right? But when oh, he sits yeah. on a table with like three other casual players, right. that's too nice here. Eh? Because he's a bit more, a bit more sweaty, shall we say, than you guys are. That's a, that's a term, right? Sweaty? sweaty. No, yeah, I don't like, know him to sweat. No, sweaty is, um, it comes I from- I sweat. This I comes from the me. tabletop gaming, wargaming thing of, if you're sweaty, you're like trying to win. You're not fluffy, you're not casual, you're sweaty. You mean sweat. like he's a spike? Yeah, a sp spike, sweaty, moving towards competitive, that sort of thing. So maybe in his circles, that is that level, but I mean, it's all a matter of perspective, right? We're, well, the idea is supposed to be if we're assigning a number value, you can logically assign a number value. Yeah, but again, that's that it, it, it's supposed to be a way to cut through perspective and get to truth. The yeah. truth of the power level of your commander deck. Right, and the so truth is, nonsense. is every, everybody's a seven or eight. Every deck's a seven. Every deck's a seven. Did you know this attracts as a seven? Well, if that attracts as a seven, then my Markov is a seven. Look. Uh, what I'm doing is to defend Krim there, because yes. like I said, it might be seven in the context of what he plays in. It does prove that um, number systems to rank anything. This is a, the, the age old critic talk of films right. and games. Can we rate them on a number scale? Sure. It's all subjective, it's all perspective. The number thing doesn't work. And the pre-game conversation still has that issue. Even doesn't if we work. remove the conversation of numbers, yeah. we're still like, do you have an infinite? And I'm like sitting there with Hatch over, I'm like, no, but I might generate 40 mana and play Critter Who four times. Yeah. That's virtually an infinite. Like some of these words aren't even equipped to really get to the nitty gritty of what people are asking. Well, and also you get into, do you have an infinite? Well, I've got several potential infinites because most commander decks have at this point an interaction or two that can 
Yeah. You know, or, or maybe it's not infinite, but combo off like you suggest. And you can't say, do you have a way to combo off? And it's like, well, that's how I win the game. I've got three opponents. Yeah. Like, like you very seldom build a commander deck. Not there is some that you do this for, but you very seldom build a commander deck where the idea is, is okay, I'm going to take out one opponent and then wait, rebuild, and take out another opponent, and then wait, rebuild, and then take out the third. It's like, no, well, I'm going to. civilization that's taken you like 400 right. yeah, years it's to like, play. It's, it's like Sid Meier's commander. Yeah, it's just not that. You yeah, can't do and that. so it's like, yeah, you do need to be like, and then I get approach of the second son, and then I win the game. But I also think, like, again, so this is one of the things I really want to talk about in this episode, and I talk about this a lot on my channel, so I'm sorry if people are watching this who've heard this before, but I think some of the things we moan about or disregard, like, can you go infinite? Is there a combo? Are things that have a stigma to them that I don't think they should? Because some you might go, yes, I do have an, uh, an infinite, but it's a five card combo. And some players are going to go, they're not going to hear the five card combo, but they're going to go, oh, he's got an infinite. So I now I need to target that person for, for the stigma. What's of wrong having... with the two card combo? What's wrong with this? No, hang on, go back to your game yeah. the other night. What's wrong with, yeah, I got a two card combo. And if I get that two card combo, we all shuffle up and get another game. And no one's wandering around the game store for 45 minutes looking so, at Warhammer. So what you're saying is a one card combo that eliminates one person isn't that healthy. I don't disagree uh, with that. Yeah. But I think those, I think, I think. I don't think there should be a stigma to, and then she went off with this two card combo and we all died. I think that's the way you do it yeah. personally. I'm grateful when that happens because I go, cool, shuffle up and play, get another deck. Get, do, can I, I do my deck but again? But I think the mentality around Commander and the conversations around Commander in spaces like Reddit and Twitter, well. and comment sections <laughs> and YouTube videos, I think all of that does have this effect of where we say to people, you can cultivate your own play experience, therefore you can tell other people what they can and can't do. You can't combo, you can't hand attack, you can't um, uh, play a stacks piece, you can't strip my, my cabal coffers or whatever. Like Things that are completely reasonable things to do. And that leads to people being like, well, I'm just trying to have fun in my way, man. I'm like, yeah, sure, but other people try to have fun in their way. Right. And I wonder sometimes if people can be a bit more self-reflective and be like, do I hate combos? Or do I hate that I haven't learned to play around combos? Or I haven't changed my deck in six years because I can't... Like, there's a little bit of self-reflection yes. more so than the outward, no, you shouldn't do that. It should be like, why can I not cope with that in many ways? I, I'm not saying I, everything is healthy. No. Like, Armageddon with no plan on turn three is not healthy. No, but, and that's yeah, that's but, one of my, my biggest gripes is when you do something like, that's a great example, Ar Armageddon turn anything with no plan... If you Armageddon, it's because you've got a way that a, you will get ahead in the But there is a NL. time and a place. I've been in a game, I think, with Krim and like Saffron Olive, where I knew this was gonna annoy Seth, but that was the intention. Like, that, that's because you know your don't, play group. No, that's because you know your no, play group. You no, don't do this to randomers. No, you don't do this down the store. No, that's terrible advice to and give. And it, it wasn't an Armageddon, it was a cataclysm, so. It, does, it doesn't make it okay. Yeah, it does. I had a creature that's like, I hit people with it. But the See, point this is- this is the problem. This is who's ruining commander is no, Pleasant no, Kenobi. No, 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 I'm saying there's a time and place for, it, it, yeah, understanding your play group, understanding your friends and stuff. There's a time and place for these things. But I agree, that's not a healthy This explains thing. that DM I got from Seth about you. Okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's the nicest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He yes. wouldn't say boo to a goose. I, what? He wouldn't say boo to a goose. I don't know what that means. He wouldn't say boo. Uh-huh. Like, boo. To a goose? Do you have geese here? Yeah. To a goose. Is that a real saying or are you just making that no, up? it's a real saying. No, it's not. It means he's a bit timid That's or not reserved. a real saying. Yes, it is. That's a British saying or an English saying? He wouldn't say boo to a goose. I don't know if it's, I don't know if the Scots say it. I've never been to Scotland. If but you're Scottish and watching this, let me know if you've ever heard the phrase, wouldn't say boo Please, to a goose. Please, fellow English people in the comment section to say that. If anyway, you're English and you've never heard it, I really we are, want you to we say are you've never. Tracked. Wouldn't say boo to a goose. Yes. That is insane. Would you, okay, abstracting away from, we are going off, so I want to know. Yeah. Would you, seeing a goose, feel brave enough to be like, boo? I hatched, I hatched two geese when I was a kid. They imprinted on me and I raised them. You're joking. I'm not joking. There, this is, this is this... the second podcast in a row where I'm like, I think he's having no, me on. No, I, I hatched two, uh, uh, two goose eggs in an incubator and they imprinted on me and I raised them up until they were full size and they follow me around and we tried to teach them to fly and there's a photo I wish I had, I lost it, but a photo someone took of me, I was 13 and I'm running down the uh, courtyard with my arms outstretched and the two geese are following me with their wings outstretched, but we couldn't right. do the thing and stuff. So I'm they just stayed like 13. I was starting to picture like last year. No. What are you doing? Is it worth to buy like and the cameras kid. turn off yeah, and you yeah, yeah. turn around and like feed these pet, geese? the Tolarian geese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so you wouldn't, sweet. you have a moral obligation not to boot them. I was their daddy. Them. Yeah. I was their daddy. Yeah, okay. Well, my mom used to scare me a lot. Anyway, 
Anyway, where were we? Should you go easy in a game of commander or should you go hard? And that's, I think the problem is this, is that people are walking away from games of commander where they didn't get to do what they wanted to do with their deck. They got eliminated and had to wait 45 minutes like you did, but they get angry. They get very angry they had to wait that 45 minutes. They got eliminated before their combo could go off. They get angrier. They were just trying to have some good, clean, wholesome magic fun. And then someone did something like, you know, Armageddon and it wasn't fun. And I actually have come around to that a lot of people seem to be saying you need to go easy. So we went from power numbers to the pregame talk, and now I think we're going to everybody just chill out, and there's no, it's like that episode of The Simpsons where they're in bumper cars, and Marge says, remember kids, there's no need to bump. You can just enjoy the ride, and that's what Commander is turning into, and I disagree, bump. I say bump, and I say suck it up. You gotta wait 45 minutes, go look at Warhammer, and contemplate your life choices, or uh, is you, you didn't get to go off, next, next turn, you can go easy in your deck construction, but you have no assurance of that game. Yeah. And I think that this, this idea of like, I get to dictate to three other people how they enjoy Commander is not fair. You have to dictate to yourself how you dis enjoy Commander. You can be reasonable about not doing Griefer. Griefer is the only thing I say, like yes. Griefer techniques. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm saying. Griefer about, techniques are no good. You shouldn't be doing that in games, though. You shouldn't do that with random people. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like I said, I'm doing that. You shouldn't do that at all. I don't no, think you should have done no, that. No, for content. No. To wind up Saffron Olive. No, because people are watching Absolutely. and they're going to be impressionable oh, on you. Oh, what Come the on, hell? Yeah. So somebody think of the children. Yeah. Why are you really yeah. doing this yeah. right yeah. now? No, yeah. no, no. Seth people respect you, Vince. People, kids watch you. Children whose parents haven't turned on the parental filter watch you and they say, I want to be like Vince. I want to Armageddon. Old man says that children are going to swing around on ropes because they watch Spider-Man. Yeah, Absolute they, they, but they nonsense. Do. They do swing around on ropes because they watch Spider-Man. Are you implying people don't swing around on ropes because they watch Spider-Man? Yes. I'm saying that no one goes, oh, I, I like the look they of that Spider-Boy. They walk Spider out of Spider-Man and they swing on oh. ropes. Yeah, we yeah, they, know. Absolutely. Yes, they do. They, what are you, crazy? So, yeah, grief your friends if they enjoy it. Seth enjoyed it. Seth enjoyed it. Yeah, Seth enjoyed it. Yeah, he was it. asking for it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not saying that. Anyway, but I agree with you. For the most part, Griffin shouldn't be there. But I also think that people do need to self-reflect and try and understand and try and rationalize why it is that they hate a certain card. Like, when someone at the table plays Zender Card Resurgent, they get like, but, oh, why are you playing that card again? And I'm a bit like that with Vorinclex and things. Sometimes you've got to reflect on, is it something that you were even rationally annoyed about? Because there's a lot of stuff in Magic in more casual circles, especially when Commander, that people get bummed out about, that isn't really something to get bummed out about. It's just something that's in the game. Yeah, I think, this is the way I think of it, I can't control another person's enjoyment. That's yeah. their responsibility, but I can control mine. And so if I'm getting game after game of Commander, where I'm walking away frustrated, where I'm work, walking away upset, where I'm walking away angry or otherwise unhappy with the game, then trying to, I don't want to go so far as to say police other players, but to, to enforce or just force other players to adhere to certain behaviors that are, I feel might be making me unhappy. I don't think you can succeed in that. I also don't think that's fair to the other players anymore. Yeah. And I think you have to look within and you are responsible for your own happiness. And so if you're feeling that way after Commander, maybe Commander isn't for you. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, so the thing I was saying recently is that cultivating your own play experience, saying I don't wanna play against X, is fine in a situation where you're on your own. So if you are playing a solo game, like Zelda or Elden Ring with no co-op or whatever, and you're like, oh, I don't like the spell casting or the summoning or whatever, that's perfectly okay, because you're not yucking anyone else's yum, you're not involved with anyone else. When it comes to Commander, which although not collaborative, you are still engaging with three other people, same as playing a MOBA, like League of Legends. If you're trolling in one of the lanes, it's not fair on the other four people for spending the next 20, sure. 30 minutes with you. Same with Commander. So I do believe, but I believe that onus is still on you. I'm, I am agreeing with you, but in a slightly way that I want to position that your happiness is important, but when you're in a, 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 a situation with other people doing an activity together, you've got to bear in mind that you can't be ruining other people's fun by saying, right. oh no, actually, I don't like X, Y, or Z. Right. Sometimes you've got to suck it up a little bit and maybe learn to play with it, because Magic's got a lot of things that can feel unfair. You, you must have been in a situation where someone casts a spell and you're like, that doesn't seem remotely fair. That's really bad for me. That's bad into my I actually, deck. Actually, I, I honestly, I, I hate to be like this, I honestly don't 
like feel like that. I'm not invested, uh, the guy with the, the largest Magic the Gathering YouTube channel, but I don't feel invested in those in individual incidents. Maybe it's that I play a lot of Magic. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's that I, I don't have- So you've uh, never seen like a new card, like uh, Plague Engineer was a, a, an infamous one recently, where tribal players were like, yeah. Oh wow, that's bad for me. Maybe, and that's a real feel. You know bad what I'm me. realizing? Like, so I felt a little bad a second ago when I said maybe Commander isn't for you because that gets back into like the Magic the Gathering. Maybe this product isn't for you, but that yeah. was related to money. And it was like, well, I want Modern Horizons to, or I was uh, Ultimate Masters. I want want Ultimate Masters, but I can't afford it. And then the response from the PR department was, well, maybe it's not for you then. And it's like, what? Because I'm poor. W what I mean by maybe Commander isn't for you is what I'm about to say is this is because you know that did happen with Plague Engineer and you know what I did? Because I play Tribal uh, in in uh, uh, Modern and Legacy. So I started playing Popper and I already had Popper decks. So I, I am so invested in magic. A lot of people don't have this because this is something I have as a result of who I am and, and such. I've got five Popper decks three modern decks, yeah, two legacy a lot decks, of guys can't do five that, like, commander players. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I'm saying that yeah. maybe the reason is, as I say, I, I, I don't care, oh, okay. And, and my response was to Plague Engineer. That's a really good example because that did affect me on Merfolk. And it did affect me being able to play Merfolk. And, and I, I went, fine, I'm playing Affinity and Popper. And then Affinity ended up becoming a deck. I, ironically, Affinity be, ended up in Popper becoming too powerful. Yeah. And I don't like playing the most powerful deck. And, but then everything, it was imbalanced. It was the biggest deck. And so I just went into Pioneer. And then I was like, oh wow, Pioneer is actually really good right now. And I just went into Pioneer. Now I've got five Pioneer decks. And that's kind of what I meant by, if you're having that feeling, maybe try picking up a Pioneer deck and getting some Pioneer games. And maybe you might actually have some fun with that or a $40 popper deck. I, but, I know, but, that, but then come back to it. It'll still be there for you. I think the problem with Commander though is that- It'll people, still be there. Yeah, sure. Commander will still be there, but there's, there's a good chance those other things aren't there for people. So if you go to your game store to pick up games of Commander, mm -hmm. and you're getting frustrated because people are playing cards that you deemed too powerful, too expensive for you to pick up, or things that are like too good against the strategy you play. If you play Enchantress and people are just constantly destroying enchantment effects yeah. and stuff, right? They may not have the opportunity to move into Pauper. Like Pauper is just, does not exist in England, for example. That's true. Or they may not be going to Pioneer, because again, stores aren't quite far in their events still yet. Is that actually Skyrim? Pa Pioneer's starting no, to get its no, legs. Yeah, sure, the pi Pioneer's are definitely uptick in popularity. I mean like- Yeah, start, I gotta get what you mean, it doesn't yeah. happen. Maybe my local game store doesn't have a Pioneer thing. Exactly, so if you yeah. wanna stay within the magic that you like playing, which is your once a week commander thing, you might need to adjust. That's very fair. Yeah, and but then that's a difficult thing. I, I can't, in good faith, be like, adjust how you're playing, because sometimes you might not have the option to adjust what you're playing, because you might only have one deck or well, two decks. Well, this is where I would also start to say, and this is, this, I don't want to like get, uh, boy, I'm spitting off the hot takes here, but I'm also a big proponent of Command P. I'm a big proponent of of Command P, well, Control P if you're on PC, right? Print, print oh, the damn card. I had no idea what you were saying. Yeah, because <laughs> hey, it's a Mac Command P. But no, wee no, print, print, hit yeah. the print button. Oh, dude, no, and that's just a very good point. Like, I, I was just bragging about, I didn't even mean to brag, I realized after it was like kind of a brag, oh, I've got a play set of Mana Crypts, and I'm like, oh God, that sounded really bad. And it's like, but you can have a play set of Mana Crypts too, yeah. if you just hit print, or you just write the word Mana Crypt on a card, so a lot of the problems that we're struggling to get around in saying chill out, learn a little yeah. bit, pivot, a lot of those problems are solved by proxying. So yep. I think that might even be to help aid the conversation around like let's stop it telling everyone to be so gentle, gentle and softly, softly and you know learn to play into Commander and, and play in a good cohesive experience. It's probably improved or fixed by the idea that we normalize proxies or at least tell people not to get so hit up at proxies. There was a discussion recently, wasn't there, about do you tell people you've got proxies during the pre-game conversation? Yeah, and that I thought was, it was I, don't, no, I don't, I thought it was a no-brainer. I'm like, just like, yeah, you mentioned you've got some proxies and then yeah. no one has a problem with it. But apparently, it's not the only no time I ever, this is the only time I will ever have a problem with proxies is if they are uh, uh, difficult for me to read or discern from one another. Yeah. I remember one person did have a deck that was proxied up. Like they, it, they literally said like the deck is like 90% just they hit print because they wanted to try it out and I was fine, but they had used a website. I don't know if it's still around, this was a couple of years back, but the website did a kind of minimalist printing where it had like just the rules text, the card cost. It was like, not quite, there was like a little thing on they, it. They but were it was really mostly, common for printing um, gauntlets. For yeah, 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 it was that website. And I, as we were playing, I said, you know, 
I, I'm having trouble knowing what's on your board. And they said, well, it's the same. You just, the name's right there in, in big letters. And I said, yeah, but we really do tell what a lot of cards are based on their artwork. And it was a little... Not uh, anymore, we don't. Have you seen some of the Secret Life? <laughs> that's true. But that, that's only one or two cards on yeah, the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, they go, yeah. okay, that's the whatever card. And, and I'm cool for having the cards all So well, my one rule with proxies is, is as long as I'm able to know what card it is and what it does, in a fair way. Uh, I think another issue is that if it's all black and white, as Midnight uh, Double Feature Hunt release showed See, wizards, to us. Wizards are so keen for us to adopt proxies. Right. They're putting on their own. Yeah, I know. Well, they give us proxies in cards now that you can just write. It's a magic card with a blank space on it for you to write whatever card you want. Wheel of Fortune. They give you free proxy cards in packs whenever there's like a, a DFC oh, or a... Oh, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah, right, that's right, right, a real right, magic yeah, card. I've seen them, you, I've seen them. If you yeah, rip yeah. it, it bleeds blue. It's got a real magic card back. Write Wheel of Fortune on it. Go to your favorite magic artist at the next GP and uh, or Command Fest or Magic Fest or yeah. SCG Con. Not sponsor of uh, either of us, but they're doing those events. Or at Mox Boarding House Portland. They don't have artists there. They do sometimes, I think. Uh, and just get them to illustrate. What a cool thing to do, though. You take one of those blank proxy yeah, cards yeah. and you say, you go up to Steve Argyle or something. You say, can you draw Pleasant me Wheel of... But you want to draw this? Like, yeah, let's yeah, go. Right. I'd love a pleasant Kenobi Wheel of Fortune there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's a great use of it. In terms of going easy on people, how should you go? What What is, when should you go easy? How should, you said deck building. You said deck yes, building. Yes, 100%. Should I even be putting things like Mana Crypt in, in decks that aren't high-end decks? You know where I actually like to put those are on my weaker decks because that's what powers them up. So people know, for example, I like to play decks like Sig, both River Guide and River Cutthroat. And I actually find that having the Mana Crypt and Mana Vault in both of those decks and not in, say, my Slivers deck is what helps those decks out because those decks struggle against a lot of what other people are running, whereas Slivers, everybody knows what Slivers does. And so Slivers doesn't need the Mana Crypt, Mana yeah, Vault, but Sig it. does, Merfolk does. Casting weaker cards or or not as efficient cards quicker right. and earlier will obviously power up your deck. Like, do you feel like if you play a Mana Crypt, though, you do paint a target on yourself and you're you're there playing your, like, rares from Shards, but... And they're playing competing. Lord of Atlantis. Exactly. Like, nobody's exactly. worried about me. Like, yeah, but then people might because of the crypts and stuff. I think it has a weird message. Um, I think deck building is where the strength should be because I think it's very... It's a bad play experience to have powerful things in your hand or powerful players available to you and then just, just to not do do them because you're not doing anything you want to be taking actions and having agency in the game of magic right so you should be pulling back at construction not at play whether or not you should play a fast mana Gaius Cradle Command is such a nonsense format because like Soul Ring and Mana Crypt and Mana Vault are all legal and I'm Gaius just like, Cradle leave Cradle out of this right? I get I get hounded for this a lot because I play that card in every green deck I can right exactly not like, no, I own, I, I'm lucky enough to own and one do you know for me it's anecdotal evidence but the most proxied card I encounter is Gaius Cradle yeah. uh, it is the most proxied card that someone says I only have one proxy in the deck and they even one time said I'm sorry but it's Gaius Cradle and I'm like, all right. And then lo and behold, that cradle comes out and it's just like game over. It really is most of the time. You can play through a cradle. Come on. Sure. Good thing I proxied a wasteland. Yeah, exactly. Like blow it up, raft their board. So you know? every, but the, and then we uh, every deck should have a wasteland? No, but they can play ghost quarters, strip okay. mines. Strip mines cheaper than wasteland by like magnitude of five, I think. Sure. Um, Dust Bowl. A uh, Field of Ruin is an incredible one because you get the guys play, grab, Get Gaia's Cradle player, and everyone gets to get a land. It ramps the rest of the table. It's a political tool. Yeah. There's loads of options and things out there. Gaia's Cradle is a ludicrous magic card, and it shouldn't be so expensive. But I also don't think it like is this. Well, it is game breaking, <laughs> but it doesn't break every game it's involved in. Is what I'm saying. What about uh, Talarian Academy? Should that be unbanned? Part of me wonders if it should. To be honest. Yeah. If Cradle's legal, why is Academy banned? Well, it's the same in Legacy. Gaia's Cradle is legal, and Academy is banned yeah. because historically, Mana Rocks uh, are fast. Mana in Mana Rocks is the problem. Right. Uh, I do wonder if Academy being unbanned, it makes some decks really, really dumb. Like the CDH community probably wouldn't enjoy it. No. But I don't see the problem with it. But I also think the ban list should just be like a handful of cards at best. Yes. So but that's, a whole, I, that's a bit of a different I, combo, I, but. So we've been talking then about like power level into pregame talk into now this idea of you need to go easy on your opponents. You shouldn't kill Krim. George shouldn't have killed you. Let's go all the way back to the very beginning, the ban list. Why do we have a ban list in Commander at all? Good question. <laughs> a because question I find myself asking a lot, right? Because like, 
it's meant to be exa- uh, it's meant to be examples of stuff you shouldn't be doing. Right. Is a, is a, is a give or take a paraphrase from Sheldon. That's not mm-hmm. unfair for me to say. Is that? Don't right? you think the examples should be what you do with them? Don't you think the examples? But how would should you be, even do that? Okay. If I put a Talarian Academy in my Sig River Guide deck, all it would do is ramp up mana from my mana rocks to let me put Merfolk into play. Uh, would that be very powerful? Yes, it would. Would that be game breaking powerful? I'd argue no. However, what you do is is showing what a artifact generating, like let's say teaming it up with Urza, <laughs> yeah. and and what it would do if you team it up with a thing where you're making all kinds of artifact creatures and 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 such. Yeah, it gets into it. Where then you 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 do this and you say this isn't something that is a, a good interaction. Gaia's Cradle in Elf Ball, that's ridiculous. Is it though? It gives elves, like it's one of the things that gives elves an edge. It's yeah, like there you go. Big mana things. That's... They should not have an edge. They should see this is, it's just this format, this format is bonkers. Cause you're like Talarian Academy three artifacts. I'm like, I'm like Talarian Academy three artifacts and I'm now like casting turnabouts. If Talarian Academy is legal, my deck, if you want to play like, yeah. like real, don't go easy on them. I'm going off the deep end. I've never played Turnabout in Commander in my life. I'm playing Turnabout. I tap all my lands, tap them again. Okay, I'm casting like but, uh, time spirals and stuff. You've got, crazy. you've got. Why, I, is, why is Time Twister legal? Why is Iona Shield <laughs> of Emeria not legal? If it's examples of things you shouldn't be doing, and everyone hates mass land destruction, why is there not a single mass land destruction spell on the on the on the list? That's Barring a very good Wildfire, point. Right. arguably, which has just come off. Right. <laughs> so and why aren't uh, cards like uh, stacks cards on the list. If yeah, that's the again, most, another thing everybody says the most miserable experience is going up against a stacks deck. So why are those cards on the list? I think stacks is one of the most misunderstood terms in all of magic. Someone will oh, play. God, here we go. Tell us, no, Grandpa. No, 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 tell us, please. No, tell them. Tell no, them no. at home. I had to listen to this all weekend. This is the fourth time he's bringing this Someone up. Someone will play a Thalia Guardian of Thraven right. in the game of Commander, and someone, like, oh, I know you're playing stacks. I'm like, Excuse me? Like, it's just speaking in non- What? How is this stacks? Well, stacks is is static orb. Yes. And? No, go on. You seem to know. Your other orb. Winter In orb. winter. Yeah. Yes. Go okay. On. And sure. the idea is, is that we use that yeah. to, you know, just completely lock out our opponent. To be honest with you, I don't actually know the origin of it. I thought smoke stacks was involved. Really? I could see that. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I always just thought when I hear stacks, I thought stacks is static orb. Is yeah, I, S from Static Orb? I thought Storm, it was an Arf- Maybe it should have been Storm. Just throwing stuff out. And I don't even know if it's yeah. true. I thought it was an Arfact heavy um, uh, uh, deck. You have, st- you have Smoke Stack. You're both stacking things, but you've got more things than them because you've got a mana walk and fast mana. Yeah, yeah. Cards. Well, and, and you've so got on. ways to then untap your things even and though they, they don't. don't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But playing one singular Thalia Guardian of Thraben, then leads someone to go, oh, your stacks. And then the memes start. And then someone at the table's a bit annoyed because they hear the word stacks. Like, oh, this is why I didn't get to do my thing. That right. person with their Thalia stopped me from casting my six card combo. It's, it's just ludicrous. Is that the problem? We've done, we've, had, we've done this exact episode before, this, this part here. It's like, that, that commander is nonsense. It right. only works if everyone believes in it. It's a bit like uh, the orc power of uh, psychic powers in Warhammer there. It's nonsense. Yes. It's, is Commander... What a bad, like, thing. What, what is your uh, ending thesis? Oh, it's just nonsense. It is, uh, but I think what the issue is is that Commander works a lot better when it isn't the main format of Magic. I think that when Commander works is that maybe, just maybe, if you didn't have everything invested in this game of yeah. Commander, that if this game of Commander was a thing you do in between rounds, on a Thursday night, but you still come in and draft, you still on Fridays, there's still other things going on, that maybe this level of frustration as it's the only time and the only way I can can play Magic. Your example was what if that's it? It's Wednesday night commander group. And Which I know- it is, my local game store, that yeah. is it. Right, so, nothing so else maybe firing. Wizards of the Coast should be taking efforts to diversify the format pool so that standards worth playing again, yeah. so that draft is an emphasis and reason for sets again, instead of let's not even make draft boosters, let's just make <laughs> set boosters it's now. It's kind of like, um, so imagine you're really into video games, right? And I am weird, really into video games. And there's games. a weird cultural shift where any, no one wants to play anything else, including yourself, because you can't, because it doesn't fire, let's right. say, except for Mario Party. Right, I don't. Like, the, I actually don't like Mario Party But it's the only much. option now. Yeah, and then I go into it wanting to get a Legend of Zelda experience, and, you and just I don't. Can't. You're just like, this is not what I want to play, but there's nothing else. So I guess I'll, I'll, actually give I'll you just a very keep real, playing Mario Party on my own. I'll give you a really real example of this. 
uh, you were talking to me. He was surprised to learn I played StarCraft in, uh, when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we had a massive confusion around whether Brood Wars the second one was I, I thought I played StarCraft 2. Which is very different to StarCraft I played StarCraft one. Brood War. I was like, at the second one that came out, Brood War. StarCraft 2 Brood War. And Vince is like, what? <laughs> yeah. We straightened it out. It was the expansion. It was a while ago. But here's what happened in StarCraft Brood War is I just liked advancing on the tech tree and building bigger things and I didn't care about attacking. And so when I would start out, what I would do is I would just build for humans. I didn't play Zerg. So Protoss and humans, Terrans, I would just build, yeah. build, what? They call themselves Terrans. Oh, leave me alone, grandpa. Uh, they, they would just build turrets or uh, they had these disruptor Bunkers. things. Hmm? Bunkers. Bunkers. You put your Marines in them and fire at them. Right. What I wanted was everyone to leave me alone. And then I would be able to advance on the tech tree and I'd build like a civilization. That's called turtling or castling, depending on yes, the game. Yes. That's what I would do, but yeah. I didn't care. And then eventually, at the perimeter, 8,000 carriers would come breaking through my tiny turret defense thing. And I was like, please, I was just trying to get to the highest level thing. And the thing is, is what I wanted to be playing was called Sid Meier's Civilization. Yes. And instead, what I was playing was StarCraft. And, 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 and that's, I think, an actually a very apt description of people are going in wanting to play Civ and they're sitting down and logging into a StarCraft Brood War yeah, game. Absolutely. And then they're saying, the let's fix this. Let's fix this by having a pregame talk and saying what power level. No, really. Let's fix this by having a pregame talk. And by the way, I'm banning Iona Shield of Emeria. <laughs> Yeah. We're banning, we're banning <laughs> Zerglings. Yeah, we're banning yeah. Zerglings. That's the equivalent. Someone says, like, I'm playing Sib Miz uh, Pirates over here. Right. And the other one's, I'm on Sib, the other two are on StarCraft. They ban the Zerglings, and everyone's just like, well, how is this going to even be? Well, how is this a If it wasn't for the Zerg time? rush, if it wasn't for Zerg rushes, I could actually get my empire built. So I say the problem is, is I but never get are, to build my empire. You are trying to get a very weird experience. No, but somebody does a Zerg rush, you're getting and a very strange experience out of StarCraft. But I, if someone does a Zerg rush, my friend would always do that to me, because he'd know what I was doing, and he would just Zerg rush and they'd come over while I still couldn't get my first turrets online because it needed the crystal thing. And this is exactly what's going on in Commander is they're saying, you Zerg rushed me before I got to build my empire. This is, oh my God, I'm not joking. This is literally what the conversation is. Yeah. So no, you shouldn't go easy on anyone in Commander. But you didn't like the Zerglings. Yeah, but I was the crazy person in this example. Oh, right, fine. I'm the Commander <laughs> players. I am my, in this example, that's nuts how I would play that. That's crazy. That's not how you play StarCraft. It's not civilization. But can you imagine? Do you know what well? I ended up doing? I ended up getting the editor and I'd make a big map and I'd just build my things and then walk around and explore. Yeah, that's nonsense. Yes. But, 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 <laughs> and the, but the thing is, can you imagine then you taking to Reddit to be like, please, please, take out Protoss turrets, yeah. take out carriers, take out Voidcraft, all that sort of stuff. Be like, no, because you're trying to change this experience that is. that's even... what people are doing. Yeah, that is what people are doing. So this is also why I got in a lot of trouble. I got. I don't want Interesting, that's called Battle Cruiser Magic, isn't it? And Battle I had, Cruiser, I had a, isn't it? Yeah, Battle yeah. Cruiser. Yeah. Right, right, right. Make it so. Um, or what was it? It was Engage, something. They all had like, like they, they were ripping they had, off, they were ripping off some, some, sure. some Star Trek things. But I, I got in trouble, a certain person who I won't name, who did not mean anything by it, but was a little agitated, uh, got very upset at me because I made a comment on a Brazilian CEDH podcast. Okay that got clipped this one sound bite and it was i said that i felt cedh is the future of commander that it's inevitable that we are going to go towards cedh yeah and i still believe that for everything we've said because cedh doesn't have this problem cedh you build your decks everyone's in agreement about what you're there to do they have a fun time they have long commander games just like anything else but they're they're like stop this nonsense it's about an optimized list there's a, there's a weird thing with cedh so i played i played like a maybe half a dozen games of it yeah. in vegas borrowing people's decks from like the player power people and stuff it's yeah. really fun and there's a weird thing that i noticed that i've said that commander isn't collaborative but the cdh uh experience of four players playing feels more collaborative than any yeah. other commander experience because there'll be bits where there was a there's a counter spell war a stack was up and there was like mm -hmm. a there was like a, a pyroblast there was a fluster storm there was a counter spell there was a mana drain it was like this mad stack and then there's other abilities on the board. And the other two players are now out of the game because they're not in this stack of one of us wins, we win. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, uh, people are discussing it because we've agreed it's discussing this fun. Like, oh, you've got this option to do this and this, but you, you know this knowledge of his hand. And like, we were talking about optimum lines because it's almost like everyone's going to that crescendo together. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's collaborative because everyone's on the same page. But commander's not collaborative because someone has to win. And a lot of the time people aren't on the same page. 
unless you're a regular playgroup. Right, obviously. right. But that's what I think. I think the, the reason why Commander keeps breaking down, it isn't because people don't go easy on their opponents. It isn't because people do go easy on their opponents. It isn't because they didn't have a pregame talk. It isn't because they did have a pregame talk. It isn't because their deck power level was a nine and not a seven or vice versa. It's because magic players are going to magic. They are, they are gonna magic. And the problem is, is that Commander, without getting into CEDH, is about not magicking but because surely. the whole thing was inspired around wouldn't it, what are the interactions that these cards that were never designed to interact with one another do? But now we've made all these made for commander cards that have taken over the format. And and it, I think you want to fix commander, you take every made for commander card and product out of it immediately. And I would challenge anybody watching this. I would challenge anybody watching this to, with your playgroup, if you have the means or you're proxy friendly or whatever, to try this if you're having trouble. And that's you... impossible because all the current cards are designed no. for it. Well, no, but, no, but it is because like you take out I was all your say commanders. standard sets only. I know you are. Yeah, but the standard sets are like Cody and Golos yeah. and Field of the Dead. Right. Even the standard. Well, you but you to... could still use the commander ban list currently. So if any of those cards are on, but it... you still got all these five color commanders. Right. So I mean, You'd have to do a pro. You yeah. have to do. <laughs> they ruined they ruined it. They did. Have to do like did. A pro Damn commander players! They ruined commander. You have to like do pre-war the spark. No supplementary product to even get close to where it yeah. is. Whenever the design shift changes, right? But isn't there an argument then with your civilization? You want to play Civ, and being this madman trying to play Civ in, <laughs> in Starcraft. <laughs> that, that there this is, is such a, a encapsulates who I am as a person. But isn't that? Yeah, it does. It sounds, sounds sounds very how much I know you. But surely there's a situation where some people trying to play Civ is okay. Is there not like the battle cruiser build up your board and then maybe someone wins, maybe you just run out of time and just, right. isn't that like a thing that some people can do? Come back to the original like, base with it. point. I, I know, I mean, CDH listen, is Starcraft, CDH I mean, is the brood war ladder. Uh, Shivam is it's one of my sports. dearest friends and, and the way he wants to play commander is like, I, I mean, it's very well known if you follow him on Twitter and it's very different than my He's philosophy. playing theme park world. There's not even an antagonist. He's just building an engine or something. Yeah, right? well, he wants he wants to have he wants a story to unfold. He wants everybody's deck to have a chance to do the things. Nobody. These are all reasonable things. Nobody get locked out. But he is. It is kind of. It is a little similar. I think in some ways too. Let's all build up and build out, and then kind of slowly bump each other. It's, 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 <laughs> the, war, it's the warfare of like the 1200s. Like everybody yeah. meet in a field right. on, on the right day, agree to it, and then we'll have fisticuffs at dawn and then return to our homes for dinner. I've, I've heard some people do commander games where they make a rule you can't attack until a certain turn. Yeah. What I've, do you think I've of been that? part of those games. I hate it. Yeah. I, I <laughs> again, and I don't want to like it, if it works for you, it works for you. Like magic's a game. If you're if you're having fun, then that you're doing it right. Yeah, that's the crux of it. I think I'm not saying like like anybody who's in the comments about to say like me and my playgroup do X and we love it. And I don't know why the professor is saying we shouldn't be allowed to do it. You should. The thing is, is I get so much mail, I get so much mail, and it's everybody saying, I'm not having fun in these games. So heavily, people not having fun, and they don't know what needs to be fixed. If we could just ban these cards, if we could just this. my I get this email, this is a very common email I get. I sat down, we all said we had eights, and then this person had a 10, and it was just baloney, or or they did this thing, and-, and That's what it, we've just said. Yeah. We've just, we just told those anecdotes too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the league magic, doesn't really matter. Commander matters even less because there's just nothing on the line. It's just there to have fun. I think what I wanted to get out of this conversation, um, I think we're in agreement here, is like the pre-game conversations and all this stuff about banning this or banning that or not banning this or not banning that. Ultimately, is that healthy and is that helping you have more fun? I don't know if it is. I don't know if the huge amount of discourse, including this hour-long podcast we've mm -hmm. just created, ironically, does Here's, it really improve the fun of it? It anything? doesn't. I don't think so, for the most part. And I think this Delete is the what it is. Delete now. <laughs> no, no, no. You want to know what I, I think would be fun? Here's, here's fun. Try it at your next Commander game, but you have to go in not saying this in advance, because the problem with this is, is Magic players would start jerking around with this and, and screwing with it. But this is, you want fun? No pregame talk, no rule zero, no Commander power level. You say, everybody bring your favorite deck. Bring your favorite deck to Commander tonight. Sit down, you say, everybody have your favorite deck? Cool. Everybody pass your deck to the right. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of value. There's a huge amount of value in sharing each of his deck, playing all of mm -hmm. his deck. And then next game, everybody pass your deck to the right again. It uh, also helps uh, with pride. There's a lot of pride in Commander. There in some is, circles, but I think, like, I think that 
that might as that might help you also in terms of your own deck building. Yeah, and understanding experience. other strategies. This is hard to do though at a command fest. At a command fest, you don't even want a stranger holding your cards. Your deck is worth more than your card. And the average price of commander decks is probably on the up with all the special editions and all the arts and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit bit awkward. Like I I I, I wouldn't let a stranger play like my tattoo deck, for example. Right, right. It's 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 tough. It's tough. <laughs> but I agree. I think. I think people should do that more often. People should deck swap more often. Last night at Mox, the ones we came start with the example was, as I said to George and Kim, I'm not going to bring my decks. Have you guys got decks I can borrow? And they're like, right. yeah, yeah. Because I just want to play something different, experience something different. And there's a lot of fun seeing how other people build, um, getting to like getting mm -hmm. to chew and be like, oh, do you have X, Y, and Z? They're like, oh, yeah. But it's just really fun and interesting. You learn. I like, you learn I like, stuff. I like fake griping about the deck that I've been given, like not in a genuine way, but like, what is this? What are you, you don't have any removal in this deck? And then George says, I do have removal in this deck you just have, you know and it's like yeah. i like that kind of like like and when comedic. you lose it's not your fault you can blame right. Krim or george it's great i already blame Krim or george when i lose <laughs> but yeah uh, so i guess the answer that we're getting at here is that you have to enjoy commander yourself you need to ask yourself why you're not if you're not and maybe look towards steps within as opposed to saying people need to go soft on you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, because I don't think that there's any soft level that'll ever be enough. I don't think you could ever say, so you say, okay, people, you need to take it easy, you know, on, on, on people in commander. How easy? It'll never be easy enough. You'll never make it easy enough. I'm still all for communication. I'm still all for talking about what kind of game do you want to have. I'm still all for post game talk. I think post game talk is actually really important too. Like what, like, was there anything this game, you know, that you thought was like, like a bad move sort of thing. You know, I played a game with Josh Lee Kwai once, uh, not on game nights, just we were hanging out playing. And I, I destroyed in it. Oh God, I wish I knew the specifics. Uh, it was, it was a bit learning moment for me. This is like seven years ago, but I remember it cause it was a learning moment. He had a thing out and he was working to, to d defeat somebody who was the threat. And I had been doing nothing and I drew, it was an enchantment and I drew enchantment destruction. And I go, destroy your enchantment. And he goes, what are you doing that for? And I'm like, cause I can't do anything. I haven't done anything. And I, you have this enchantment that's doing work and I have enchantment destruction. And he said, okay, great. Now, I don't, I don't remember who it even was, is, is just gonna, you know, like take over, which he did. And the game went on and Josh was like, yeah, we were just about to get going here. And Prof just destroyed, you know, the enchantment that the was- King made. What's that? Did you king make a little? Yeah, I think that's what happened. And I th and I thought about it, and I thought at the time I was just doing it to do something. Yeah. I wasn't doing it to grief him. I was just like, oh, I can get rid of that enchantment. And then it was like, but the greater game was misserved, and it yeah. ended up not being a great and game. And that's, that's what I talk about when it's about learning and self reflection and learn the fundamentals of the game. I don't just mean how mana is tapped yeah. and stuff. I mean like you draw a removal spell, and instead of just firing off of the first thing you can see is having some restraint and thinking about the bigger picture of what's going on in the game. But I don't think people the solution, don't, don't, don't. I think a lot of people in Josh's, but Josh didn't, you know, he was shuffled up and play and then whatever, but I think Josh's, if, if a lot of people's reaction in Josh's position would have been, we need to make a rule about that. We need to make a pregame thing about that. We need to make a thing about that that forces Brian not to do that action. And the, again, the onus was on me. And, and this is also what I mean when it's on you about the fun, but it's also you about the plays that you make and the way that you go. And it isn't about going easy. That wasn't me. If I didn't disenchant whatever had happened, that, that wasn't me going easy on Josh. That was me playing, in fact, the game smarter because if I had recognized that what Josh was doing was serving the table better, yeah. which it was, then it's, it's about, well, here's the tough thing, getting to be a better player, getting to recognize threats better, getting to uh, add removal and interaction more, getting to not get salty when you lose, getting to accept that you will lose games, that you'll have games where you don't get to fire off, and and trying to find other ways to have fun. That's one of the, the big hard. talking points recently as well, is like, do you have to improve at hobbies or games? Right. I think, like you're saying, I think you do, especially in a situation where you're playing with other people. It's that Elden Ring Zelda example again. You have to get better at Zelda, no one cares. Right. But if you're playing Zelda with three other people and they're like dependent upon you at least knowing not to just throw the game to one person by firing off your removal right. just because you fancy it or you don't right. know what to do, like you do have to improve a little bit. And, I, and that sounds a bit like get good is what I've in the video yeah. recently. And that's not what I'm saying. Get, be get better. Yeah. Not get good, but but like 
learn a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of self-improvement goes a long way mm -hmm. right, towards fun and stuff. Yeah, I know that that's not the easiest solution. A number is easy, right? Saying, understand if your deck's a seven or a 10, but no one ever could. I know that a pregame conversation that I myself propagated, you know, or not propagated, but like uh, amplified the idea of, sounds like that's all you have to do. And it's like, no, the answer is much more difficult and requires introspection, yeah. looking within. But at the end of the day, if you do that, you will hopefully enjoy this great game, and it is a great game, more, enjoy yourself more, and I've always said, if you're having fun, you're doing it right, and what's wrong with having fun and working to have fun? So on that note then, mm -hmm. we're done. Should we play some Commander? No, Commander's a miserable format. Brian? Brian, where are you? Brian? Brian? Where are you? Brian? Brian? Brian, what are you doing? Brian? Brian? Where are you? It's your move, old man. It's time to duel. It's time to d d d duel. It's time to duel. It's time to duel, old man. One moment, please. Cool. Mana blur. Duel! This is terrible. It's time to.